Okay, okay, uh, EMP gets people's attention. A bit of a provocative title. Um, what I mean is, uh, I had one viewer that had a question about using a vacuum tube in place of the crystal diode. So just, uh, you know, if you think we've gone as far off the beaten track and off the rails uh, by simply using bias uh, along with the crystal set, now we're going to put a tube uh, in the place of the crystal diode and we're going to see if that can uh, be used in a crystal set. Now, will this reject EMP? Well, any device can be overcome by EMP if it uh, arcs over, but it would take quite a bit to damage a vacuum tube, especially a diode vacuum tube like this. So, by the way, when you bring up EMP, people get very nervous. Uh, they talk about your car suddenly not being able to work and so on. And I can say that uh, I was doing some consulting back in the 90s, and I got to be out at the Chrysler Proving Grounds where we actually bombarded cars with high power levels at all frequencies. Uh, basically, uh, you've got a CB ear and a big truck next to you, and let's say he's running a 5,000 watt linear and keys up. Um, have you seen your car go out of control and suddenly veer off the road? Uh, no, you haven't. And the reason you haven't is cars are one of the most EMP proof devices there are right now because of the shielding and the grounding that's required to make all of those computers uh, RF proof. So just keep that in mind. So uh, let's just try to stick a, uh, a rectifier and maybe a diode connected triode in place of the crystal diode. Let's see if we can uh, hear some stations. So some of the characteristics of our notional EMP proof crystal set. It actually doesn't have a crystal. How about that? We're using a dual diode vacuum tube, the 12H6. Um, this is a signal diode. It's not normally used for power supply rectification. It's a, it's a true signal diode used in both AM detectors and automatic gain control circuits, uh, noise limiters, things like that. Um, of course, if you're going to be EMP proof, you've got to go back to the mechanical variable capacitor. No varactors here, folks. Also, uh, the main uh, way that EMP uh, enters the, your system is not magically through the, through the air. It actually has to be picked up by something because it is uh, electromagnetic pulse. It is RF and it is a magnetic wave. And that wave has to be picked up by an antenna. Uh, now, everything you attach to this radio is an antenna, including the headset. But um, I've put a small neon bulb across the headset terminals to just show that uh, this could flash over and uh, collect some of that energy uh, to protect, you know, a solid state uh, type device that's capable of, uh, of the about 70 volts of protection the neon bulb can give you. Uh, also on the front end, if we look at the front end of this thing, we also see there's a neon bulb from antenna to uh, across the primary, which is where the antenna and ground connect. However, the connection from the ground to the uh, rotor of the capacitor, which is the frame of the capacitor, has been broken. And that's uh, another sneak path is through the ground into your system. So I've broken the ground and the uh, primary is completely isolated from the secondary. Now you might have seen the battery pack went flying. Um, the idea of using a battery pack, again, is another fanciful thing uh, with this video. But we have to light the filament of the tube. In this case, the battery connected to the tube does not represent an antenna that would pick up a lot of EMP. So uh, the filament, of course, being a, a piece of wire that heats up is not going to be subject to uh, damage uh, from an EMP. So anyway, I just wanted to show you my notional 
EMP proof crystal set, but it's not really a crystal set, it's a valve diode radio. Some of you are going to think this is a little bit silly, but I had a viewer request. Apparently, he thinks that I promised at one point, and it's probably in video evidence, that I would show a vacuum tube or valve diode used in a crystal set. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but certainly tube type diodes have been the basis for detectors throughout most of the 20th century and the addition of one or two diodes to common uh, triode tubes um, you know like the 6AT6, 6AV6, 6BF6, that kind of thing uh, has been common practice certainly since the 30s and uh, there are some standalone diodes like uh, this device here. Uh, this is a, uh, a 12H6 or a 6H6 dual diode uh, made for signals. Um, the uh, 6AL5, 12AL5 in the miniature. And, of course, a lot of the early books show a common triode, such as the 6J5, being wired as a diode, working as a detector. So we'll investigate what a valve diode can do in a crystal set setup. And, of course, this begs the question, why am I not using a proper diode tube such as the 6X4 or the old Type 80 dual diode. These are proper diodes. Why, I, uh, why am I not using a diode like this instead of the small signal tubes? And you kind of answered your own question there. It's the same reason we don't use a 1N4001 as a detector. We use a germanium diode, and it's a question of voltage drop. These power uh, diodes are made for high voltage. They didn't care if you dropped 3, 4, 5, 10 volts delivering power to your load because you have 400 volts, and losing a few volts through the rectifier is not a big deal. Uh, Proper signal diodes like this 6AL5 dual signal diode and tubes like we mentioned before the 6AV6 has built-in diode detector that is very sensitive to very low RF signals for RF and IF rectification for detectors. So it's a little hard to see, but I'm actually measuring some diodes here. This is a typical power diode, and we want to measure its forward voltage drop. And what we see is uh, it's about a half a volt, 0.54. Typical silicon diode. So 1 in 4001. Again, 0.53 volts forward drop at this low current. Um, this looks like it might be a 914 or 4148. Yeah, 500. Uh, this is a shot key. This one should be fairly low. 0.261. Okay, and now our germanium, the one we've been using in the crystal radio. 0.240. Okay, not a, not a super germanium, but pretty good. Now, you might ask, well, what about this tube diode that we're trying to use here? What kind of voltage drop are we going to get across that tube diode? Let's see if we can get on this. 0.702. 
So definitely the tube has more voltage drop than a regular diode, but not a lot. Okay, it's it's you know it's a lot worse than germanium, but it's uh, just a little bit worse than a uh, a regular silicon diode. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook both sections in parallel and see if we can get that voltage drop down even further. And for the 6H6, 12H6, it's 3 to 5, 8 to 4. Okay, I now have both sections tied together. Let's see what the dual diode valve rectifier can do. Oh, not bad. 529. Okay, so two diode sections tied together on this particular 12H6 is getting you down into the range of, you know, a good silicon diode. Okay, so you're going to pick up some stations. Um, I think you could pick up stations even with the other setup, but uh, let's, uh, before we do anything crazy, let's just hook this up and see if we hear something. It's not bad actually, it's really picking up. Um, let me get the amplifier on this so you can hear it. It, it is detecting quite nicely. Workers, because you'll have more electricians and more plumbers because they will get trained. Yeah, the, the issue that you're going to run into in a lot of companies is they haven't had those training programs internally in a while. They, they haven't had to. Okay. A little bit weaker. Now on the very strong local stations, uh, I can still pick them up okay, but they are noticeably weaker than the germanium diode. It does indeed work, and it does pick up. Um, if you've got a diode that's got half a volt of drop, of course you're going to lose some of the signal. You'd like to be down in the 150s to 200 region rather than that you know, half a volt. Now, you could get fancy and try to forward bias the diode. We could try to introduce some bias in here and see if we can pick up some sensitivity. Next topic on the financial exchange. Inflation is still a hot buzzword on Wall Street. We'll keep you informed with the latest news all morning long, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. When you think Caribbean vacation, do you sometimes alternatives to those first-class resorts and hotels? Well, there are. Hi, Barry Armstrong here, my friend. So, um, I've added bias so that I can forward bias slightly the vacuum tube diode. And I've done that by putting a potentiometer across our 12-volt source and taking the center tap of that through a 47K resistor. That goes to the bottom of the main tuning coil, which has been lifted off ground and bypassed with a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. You still need that coil connected to ground, but only for RF. So we're using a 0.01 to ground it, and then we're sending the voltage out of that 47k uh, right to that point so that it can put the current through this coil and forward bias the diode into the load which would be your headphones normally. In our case it's the potentiometer in the amplifier but in most cases it would either be a transformer or it would be your headphones. I am seeing improvement by using the bias. It definitely peps it up by putting just a little bit of bias on these diodes and uh, getting them uh, conduct just about cl into conduction, just below conduction. So I'm actually able to simulate 
a much more sensitive detector with the vacuum tube just as I can taking an ordinary silicon diode and biasing it slightly forward. So it all seems to agree. Um, the next thing we're going to try is a 6J5 that is outfitted as a diode. And I'll show you how to do the diode hookup on an ordinary triode tube. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. Income may be subject to stable tax. When interest rates rise, prices fall. When interest rates fall, prices rise. There's one word we can all agree on today. Free. Everyone likes a free meal or a free ride. But how about okay, I've got a 6J5 metal in there right now, wired up as a diode. The grid is connected to the plate. I've got the strongest station, a local station. Um, we're running on 12 volts. There's a 22 ohm series resistor to lower the voltage for the filament on the 6J5 so it doesn't burn up. And it's rectifying quite nicely. Let's try a uh, glass 6J5. Okay, here's a glass 6J5. Get this in here. Let's see what that one does. These are old tubes that are just in the junk box. Sean Hannity's television show, Cash Patel, who is the five people in the room. So, not once, but we are now looking at a triode that is connected as a diode. Our triode tube is taking the place of the 1N270 diode. So very quickly, let's substitute in the, the regular germanium diode and see if there's any difference in, in uh, the signal. Let's put it at half volume. Bad actors in large crowds. We just came out off a summer of. Okay, that's half volume. Let's put the germanium diode back in. Is to do, and then it became the the under the direction of Speaker Pelosi. Now that the president authorized it, okay, she that's the, the regular right diode, the germanium. That jurisdiction went to her. Now let's go back to the vacuum tube again. Remember, this is. This is just a triode tube that is diode connected. Okay, I just plugged in a metal 6J5. Let's put this back at half volume again. Okay, so this is the uh, 6H6 dual, dual diode, and it is uh, paralleled up. So I have both diodes paralleled. The only thing I had to do was to remove the dropping resistor because this is a 12H6, not a 6H6. If I'd use the 6H6, you could plug the 6J5 in and, this, and the 6H6 in, and you wouldn't have to change a thing. It just turns out that the socket would be wired perfectly uh, either way, which is interesting, isn't it? Uh, a lot of times you've got to rewire sockets to change tubes, but in this case, uh, everything seemed to work out perfect, uh, which is rare. Um, so let's do the same thing. We'll put the volume at half. Now the question is, how far does Putin go? If you want the long-term strategy, that would be most effective. Okay, let's try the germanium diode. And, and supply the world, especially our allies, with all of their energy needs. I don't see that ever happening under this president. So there's no that doubt that, again, and watch the real semiconductor diode, God I'm wrong. the germanium and diode is definitely more sensitive than the, uh, the tube. And I guess that's what we were trying to uh, ascertain with this little experiment. However, if we introduce a little bit of bias to forward bias the diode a little bit, we can get sensitivities that probably beat most silicon switching diodes at least. So we have a new circuit diagram now. The, uh, we have the cathode grounded on this detector. It's still basically a series detector, but as you can see the diode instead of you know being in series the way that we're used to seeing it, we've grounded a different point of the circuit. We've got a circuit that's uh, kind of confused people over the years. It's the tube type detector or the tube type diode detector. 
Let's start out with the one that's familiar to us. And uh, I think we're looking at what our crystal radio basically is. It's a positive going uh, crystal rectifier and it's using a semiconductor diode. Uh, in the demodulation process we recover the audio and it is a positive going type signal. So you can see that this is a, a very straightforward circuit. Now we've inserted a vacuum tube in place of the semiconductor diode. We've got this vacuum tube now. The vacuum tube also has its cathode connected to the output. Now this is confusing to people because they always think of electron flow, that electrons flow from cathode to plate, cathode to plate, this direction, this direction. Well, actually conventional for current flow is from plate to cathode. So we're tracking the charge that's, uh, that's being caused by electrons moving, but that means that positive current is flowing in the other direction. Okay, So if electrons move one direction, positive current goes in the other direction. Just like the semiconductor diode when we say that holes move rather than electrons move. So this is conventional current flow, not electron current flow. So once we put that tube in the circuit, it also produced positive type uh, demodulation, half wave rectification, and we send that to the amplifier and we hear it. Uh, this resistor, of course, in our case, could be a pair of headphones and not a natural resistor. Now what I found with this hookup, and you saw that when I attached the battery pack to light up the filament, uh, the reason I was doing that, I was experimenting to try to reduce hum. I was hearing hum, especially in the headphones. When I was lighting up the tube with AC or DC, I was getting some ground loop hum. It's a bad idea to hook the tube in series like you did the semiconductor diode because the tube has filament voltage and the filament voltage can introduce noise directly into one of your most sensitive points, the place where you're listening to the audio. So with vacuum tubes, and this is from the 30s on, they basically came up with a topology of a series uh, detector. It's series, but instead of grounding at the bottom of the tuned circuit and the bottom of the uh, the load, they grounded the cathode of the tube. Okay, Now when you have the filament lit, it's at a low point or it's at a grounded point in the circuit and the, uh, the AC is not imparted into the signal like it is with the series. So this is the circuit we're going to use now. Now uh, this will produce a negative output but we're taking the AC out as audio through a capacitor. We don't care if it's negative or if it's positive. It's just a phase reversal to us. So this is the next hookup that we're going to explore. The grounded cathode series detector using a vacuum tube. And uh, we're developing the voltage across that 0.01 microfarad capacitor. And the uh, phones, of course, represent the, uh, the resistance that's required to complete the circuit. In this case, it's a, uh, the resistor that's inside the amplifier box. But uh, no change with the varactors. They're still grounded and being tuned uh, with, with variable voltage to ground but uh, we did have to lift the bottom of the main secondary coil and that becomes where the audio comes out and it's filtered by this capacitor. So that's just a different way of drawing the circuit. It grounds the cathode which relieves a lot of the pressure on the filament circuit. It doesn't need to be isolated like it would if it was floating like we had it before. I have pin one of this metal tube loose right here. The idea of having pin one loose is it represents the metal shield on this tube. 
And I wanted to see if grounding that made any difference with noise. And uh, it turns out there's there's no hum, there's no noise. And uh, you would just take that pin one and ground it to eight and four, you'd be all set. Again, both sections of the 12H6 are in parallel to give the most uh, sensitivity. You actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yeah. Let's see if we can get some other stations here. ...and live radio stations from across the country. And it lets him create commercial-free custom stations just by typing in a song or artist. Okay, so maybe this... Uh, video, calling it an EMP video was probably a little bit of a come on and not really uh, the basis uh, for the whole thing. I just wanted to show how we could do uh, detection using a tube diode. However, there are semiconductor devices that certainly can be biased, uh, forward biased, and provide protection against EMP. You know, certainly high voltage diodes like a 1N4007, properly biased, uh, a 1N5408. These are 1,000 volt PIV type diodes that are capable of repetitive uh, reverse uh, breakdown protection. Uh, high current. You're not going to blow this thing up. Remember, when we're talking about EMP, it's the weakest link theory. The semiconductor that's the most sensitive that burns up that makes the item non-operational not a complete destruction of every semiconductor device on the board. You're not going to blow up a, a, a power diode that's designed to take tremendous abuse. So the other thing we can do is we can put these power diodes back to back on the front end to, uh, to snub out any high voltage or high, high current that's uh, coming down the antenna. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this little video on uh, EMP proofing your crystal set.